Hello everyone and welcome back. I'm still Silicomins and I'm still joined by my good man Ponox. Ponox, how are you doing on this fine night? Oh, I'm doing pretty good. I mean, nice. it's a, a very exciting game one. Uh, yeah. I have high hopes for game two coming to this one. Uh, we do have Team Malicious Intent versus Fellowship of the Nerds. Uh, game one of the series, if you guys didn't catch that, actually going over to Team Malicious Intent. Uh, pretty big battle early on there. It's yeah. very close. There's only like one kill before the 15 minute mark, yep. uh, which was only the kill was, you know, a level one invade. Level base, one invade, so. exactly. Yeah, so yeah. I mean. Resident it, sleeper. Yeah, exactly. So the lane's obviously going pretty even right off the bat, but it was only in some team fights there that fought over objectives where the Team Militia's Intent kind of caught their stride. Um, we are going to be hopping and picking band very quick here, though. Zed, Bard, and Nidalee and Gangplank being taken right off the board. No one wants to deal with them. Yeah, these are the exact same bands. If they're going to hold true, it's going to be the Echo coming out on the side of Team Eli. And the last band, last game, was Shen. So let's see if they hold true. See if they decide to switch things up. Does TMI want to let that Echo open? Let's see if Parablo or Jay Frazier have been playing it. Ooh. And does Shen come through? And they're going to let Ooh. both slide. It's going to be Morgana taken away from Chazgood. And Azir taken away from TSM Never Lucky. And it is. Oh, Echo actually Echo. taken away. I was, I was going to be like, oh, yeah, Fellowship, take it. But actually, TMI take it away from Fellowship of the Nerds. You know, I'm a big fan of Echo right now. I feel like he's actually a very strong flex pick. Yeah. Um, I mean, you can really still throw him in the jungle. He's a great AP jungler right now, especially after some of the runic Echo nerfs shut down some of them. I feel like Echo still is one of the ones that's thriving. But uh, you can also now, with some of his recent buffs, flex him into the, some of the lanes, actually. We've seen some prominence in the like the top lane with, like, um, we've seen... Impact play him in some of the playoffs there. We see yeah. Hooney play him quite a bit. Um, as well as you can also take him to the mid lane if you really wanted to. But I feel like he's going to find a stride in the top lane there because he's got a lot of flexibility in his builds. But Yeah, I think the big thing about Echo, he's kind of riding the wave of like the OPness of tanks in this current meta. Mm -hmm. You know? Build that maybe one damage item, maybe that like bruiser item, get that abyssal scepter or something if you have an AP matchup, and then just build straight tank. Get the yeah. sunfire cloak, you get you get the uh, ZZ Rot portal, and he's become like a split pushing tanky monster just riding on your base damage i think yeah. he's definitely a benefactor of the current meta mm -hmm, exactly and i mean it's really fun actually playing echo in the jungle because you can build the ludens echo then you build lich bane then you build uh or not ludens echo the uh, runic echoes runic echo and then you build lich bane then you build dead man's plate and you just have so much movement speed paired with yeah. any kind of boots that you go with you're just ripping through that jungle yeah. it's actually so fun um poof the sheep hovering the uh the Singe there, an ode to his days back on Vicious and Delicious there when yep. uh, he played that in the top lane quite a bit. But um, I don't think that's going to be locked in here. But we got to take a look at this here, though. They decide to go with the Ari again here for Jay Frazier and the Gragas here for Bosgood. A good takeaway from Poof the Sheep, actually. But they are going to lock in the Shin and the LeBlanc early on. Uh, Mo Money getting his favorite ride or die there, the Shen pick, and then uh, TSM Never Lucky going to take that LeBlanc in the mid lane. A very potent pick right now. Yeah, definitely. I think a favorable matchup as well into Ari. Ari used to be kind of like the bread and butter, one of the bread and butter counters to LeBlanc because you could time the charm, stop that distortion, but now charm doesn't stop dashes. Mm -hmm. So LeBlanc actually, you know, does pretty well into Ari. Yeah. Yeah, you know, lo and behold. So this is going to be a little bit tough for Jay Frazier to get going once again, and that's not something... You know, that usually pans out for Fellowship. They usually need one of their lanes to get ahead, or it's Jay Frazier, Harablo, or Baby Trog. The Sivir was left open, but they're going to instead opt for the pretty dangerous lane combination of Lucian Braum. What do you think about this pick as opposed to maybe taking the Sivir this time around? If they, you know, if they really wanted it. Well, I mean, if they had their eyes set on that Braum anyways, I mean, there's just so much synergy with Braum and Lucian. I mean, yeah. just with Lucian's passive, he's going to be able to pop that very, very quick. So, great pick up there. I mean, it still has a lot of damage, especially early on there. I mean, it's not going to be as big of a late-game monster as Simmer in those team fights. But, I mean, just in terms of early laning, he's just a huge bully. So, I mean, that's going to be huge. Um, little tough guy, though. Hovering this Callista, I mean, that's something that we've seen him play in the past. Yeah. And he's been, a, like, a monster on that. So... Uh, that's definitely something that you got to worry about going into this one. Yeah, I think so. Callista receiving some nerfs as well in 6.6. .6. Got nerfed when she's not around her Oathsworn. Mm -hmm. uh, but it doesn't matter because they're going to switch to Sivir. Yeah, so Callista, you're dumb, dude. <laughs> Callista is still actually really good as long as she's with whoever she bound to, mm. but when away, she loses a lot of attack speed. But when she's with her Oathsworn, she actually gets a little bit, like a 1% or 2%, it was a 1% or 2% buff or something like yeah. that. So make it play more around that synergy between the bot lane or whoever you bind with, but instead we're going to see the Sivir come out anyways, and it's going to be Poof the Sheep playing some Lee Sin here, really test his jungler stuff. Another thing we didn't really point out, I know much to the chagrin of one of our members in chat we didn't highlight that vad help me is not in the jungle this game is actually poof the sheep one of the subs coming in so mm -hmm. didn't highlight that early but 
Obviously, they didn't miss you too much, help me. Oh, Ooh, spoiler. Shh, shh. Spoiler, he was the one in chat. Oh, no. But anyways, so with that Lee Sin being locked in, that is going to, you know, for sure point out the fact that that Echo is going to be going into the top lane there. Yeah. And also, now we're going to see the Maokai locked in for Ablo. Seeing a little bit more favor coming into the Maokai meta once again here yeah. in the top lane. Um, everyone hated it back in the day, but I actually was a big fan of it. I thought he was a... He's, he offers... Everyone's like, oh man, yeah, Flash, Twisted Advance, huge mechanics, but it's, who cares? I mean, yeah. everyone hates Sivir, but she's so strong right now in the meta. It's the same thing as Maokai. I mean, with the recent buffs that we've seen with the saplings and everything like that, he still offers a huge amount of utility, especially into something where you want to pick off a carry, something like a yeah. LeBlanc, something that's very mobile. Point and click, absolutely, go for it. Exactly. I'm, and, I mean, he offers a lot of frontline, he offers a lot of AoE damage, and, uh, I mean, he's a great pickup right now in the top lane meta, so... I, I really like the, the Fellowship of the Nerds picking that one up. Yeah, I think so too. The only thing holding back the Maokai was the fact that he just did so poorly into AP matchups. Because he was the only champion, I think, in the whole game, or at least one of the very few, that actually didn't receive uh, scaling MR. As he leveled up, didn't get any MR off that, so it got crushed later on in the laning phase by AP matchups. But Riot uh, said, uh, you know, here you go, Treebeard. Take, take, this MR, go. take this MR and take it into lane and become one of the meta top laners again. And happily, Rabo picking that one up. I thought maybe they would have went back to the Nautilus because that was left open and kind of yeah. similar point-and-click mm -hmm. tank CC style. Yeah. But Maokai instead. So we'll see how it pans out. Yeah, for sure. And, I mean, some of the things that really helped out Maokai when he was in the meta was the Righteous Glory. That yeah. item kind of being gutted now is not going to be too favorable for him. You're going to probably see him either going with like something like a – frozen uh iceborne gauntlet or something like that yeah. just something to give him a mana pool early on there versus the righteous glory um but yeah i mean we're gonna have to see how he itemizes especially into something like an echo it's gonna make him have to make some tough choices here whether he wants to go with like kind of that s similar mr style that we see with the banner command the zz rot or if he's gonna go with kind of his build for the team kind of thing so I think choices. I think Similon can afford to just look at this team comp it depends what poof the shield build poof the sheep builds poof the sheep <laughs> Uh, but Similodon could afford to go slightly damage, I think. Lee Sin could be a primary tank, and Shen's always going to go full tank. So I would like to see Similodon come out with a more carry-centric, maybe split-push, you know, Lich Bane style mm -hmm. uh, build here. I, I don't want to see it. Let's, let's get it. Let's get it going. Let's get it going. But we're going to take a short break, guys. Make sure you don't go anywhere. We'll be back in about a minute or so with TMI and Fellowship of Nerds. Don't go anywhere. Welcome back, guys. We are here with Game 2 of Team Malicious Intent and Fellowship of the Nerds. We are going to have uh, Team Malicious Intent on the blue side. It is going to be Similodon in the jungle with uh, Echo 
and, or sorry, Similidon in the top lane with Echo. Poof the Sheep in the jungle with Lee Sin. TSM never lucky in the mid lane with LeBlanc. Little Tough Guy in the AD carry role with Sivir. And Mo Money on support playing his favorite Shen. Playing his favorite Shen back at it again on the red Ooh. side. It is going to be Fellowship of the Nerds. Harabla on the top lane playing Maokai. In the jungle, it is going to be Bosgood playing Gregus. Jay Frazier in the mid lane playing Ari. And the bot lane is going to be Baby Trog on Lucian. And Shaw's good on that Brom good. The deadly combination there, Lucian Brom. Yeah, one, one that we don't see often in uh, League of Legends. <laughs> Not at all. No? No. Yeah. Uh, it's definitely one of my favorites. Yeah. Uh, uh, bot lane kind of synergizers there. But uh, the Maokai, I'm, I'm really excited for that top lane matchup, actually. Similidon being such a carry-oriented uh, top laner, playing something like Echo. He kind of has the same style as Huni there. The uh, very, like, lots and lots of aggression. But we, as we saw last game with that Trundle, I mean, they've kind of focused that and tried to tear that one down by focusing a lot of attention on him. I mean, yeah. Trundle, though, I mean, he's going to scale up eventually. So, but Echo is something that can be shut down a little bit easier than that Trundle. So they're going to have to be kind of careful how they play that. The Meow Kai, though, skin. Swag. Yes. Love it. Yes. I love that skin. It's so nice. Same. It's just got to... It's got some great visuals. It's just all around a, fu a fun skin. As lackluster as like the April, April Fool's. Fool's event, if you can even call it that, Draven Day or whatever crap that was, they put out some good skins this year, I think. Yeah. Besides Draven Draven. I'm not, I, a, I'm not a huge fan of it's, that skin. It's tough because everyone's so sick of Draven now. Yeah. And it just oversaturated the market with Draven. Um, but, I mean, it, it's still a cool skin if you ignore that. But a nice trade here in the mid lane so far. TSM never lucky. Just trying to... Dance and dip and duck and dive and dong. As five much as D's. The five D's He's of a League. dodgeball. Yeah, oh yeah, right. League. Blah, wrong sport. So there should be five L's of League, right? Yeah, I guess so. Following, following that trend. Live, laugh, love. <laughs> Live, laugh, love. And, League uh, and legend. League and legend. There you go. That's the five L's right there. Looks like it's going to be a standard start. Uh, it was going to be the top side leash. Rabble of up and out. Boss getting a little bit with that early red. Lee Sin stop starting on the top as well. The early... Exhaust gonna go out on a little tough guy to level two, but only to the level one of Chaw's good and Baby Chog. Maybe a little bit uh, defensive, I guess, use of that exhaust there as Mo Money landed on early taunt onto Baby Chog. So just being too careful there, but you know. I mean, that's the scary part about this Braum, though. I mean, he's gonna have the, the stronger early game here, even though Mo Money does have the taunt and stuff like that. I feel like you definitely need more backup than just a Sivir, especially early on here when it's just Doran's Blade against Doran's Blade, because right now, Lucian's gonna bully you out. If he taunts him, he's gonna auto-attack you. Braum just has to apply the passive, and then you're pretty much gonna be stunning yourself after the po that point. So something you gotta be very, very careful of is uh, going and trying to go too aggro early on against this bot lane that Fellowship of the Nerds have here. You gotta play it out, you gotta wait to scale up, or you have to kind of wait for some support here. And I mean, support they probably will have. I mean, Lee in a very uh, early style jungler here. Same with LeBlanc, someone who loves to roam. So they might actually get that attention in the bot lane that they so desperately needed last game. Um, they might get that this game. So fingers crossed here, at least for Team, uh, or you know, Team Malicious Intent was a team that was kind of bullying last game. Yeah, I'm exactly. Getting, I'm getting mixed up. Blue We're getting all the, all the teams mixed up. It's all the name changes and Blue whatnot. Blue side, red side. People what? going uh, on, yeah, different teams. And it's whatever. Yeah. yeah. But, I mean, still, regardless, it, right now they have the weaker bot lane of the two, I would say. It's Mo Money, he's going to have to play a little bit passive until they get something more in their favor. They get the lanes where they want them to be. They get a jungle support, something like that, because Shen is absolutely great at setting up these ganks in the bot lane if he can't get the right positioning and the right support. But Sivir, she's just too weak early on here, so. Yeah, exactly. A little tough guy. Just gonna look to get to this late game and survive such a potent laning phase. Yeah. And I agree with you wholeheartedly. Bosgood's gotta make his way down here a couple times. I think he just just get his tent, you know, pitch it close by, not too far. Uh, maybe closer to the mid lane, maybe get some attention there. But he's got to just be down there 24-7 and try and get that server behind. Really delay the late game server, the sixth item server, and just get Baby Trog fed. Baby Trog, one of the huge carries. We saw it last year a lot on other champions like Tristana, able to just carry like whole games pretty much single-handedly. We want to see more of that, and that's when Fellowship saw lots of success. So getting back to that, I think, is a huge key for Fellowship. Yeah, exactly. I mean... Jay Frazier, I mean, in this mid lane there, uh, it's tough to gank onto a LeBlanc, especially early on, uh, just because she's going to have just you know, some way more mobility than you even, like, before 6, even after 6 there, just with the double distortion. So 
you don't want to focus too much attention on that one because Jay Frazier, he's going to be able to push the lanes by himself there. He's not going to have too much trouble. So you don't want to worry too much, but Similidon, he wants to go for it right now. Yeah, the gank, Poof the Sheep is there. The Twist Advance onto that Lee Sin. And not enough damage is going to be coming in despite the red buff burn onto the Lama, okay? you be able to get out of that one pretty easily. Gregus Kaskbera makes his presence known in the bot lane, but to no avail. Yeah, to no avail. I mean, like you were saying, they got to try and pitch that tent down there, uh, try and really make some moves in the bot lane. So far, it uh, looks like they have the same idea, but it's not quite working out as the lanes are very, very pushed. And it's a little early on to try and dive those towers. So they're just going to keep pushing on, keep trying to deny a little tough guy here. There is a a CS discrepancy already coming out in the bottom lane here, but I mean that is going to be completely counteracted by Similidon in this top lane who's really pushing the advantage here. 11 CS up on this A Lamaokai and um, pushing him even further and further under his own tower. So, got to be careful. Um, I mean, Maokai, if he's low on mana, he's not going to have the best time farming under tower either. Yeah, definitely not. Poof the sheep. Doing a little bit of a uh, little bit of showing of his champion pool here. A top laner primarily, but coming into the jungle role, he's really, you know, been quite the rock. He hasn't really made any misplays. He had a really good game on Gregus last game. Yeah, so I absolutely. Think he had a great game. Yeah, his performance has been something, you know, pretty noteworthy. Maybe uh, these guys should look to just replace Healthy. Just to get, get him out of there. Shots fired. Get him out of there. Shots are fired. Uh, I only take shots when I know I only take shots when I know they're listening. Yeah. So they have a chance are to you defend think, Are you thinking like a, like a wild turtle style replacement there? Yeah, definitely. Like, yeah, just, just come in to sub for one game, get a pentakill, and then, oh, I guess you're going to be our new starting AD carry. Just don't be, except instead of getting a pentakill, just not feeding is, like, the criteria for this one. Yeah. So, yeah, there you go. <laughs> That's a pretty high high standards, I'd say, for TMI. So, um, I, we're going to have to see if Poof the Sheep can kind of keep up with the rest of the squad here. But Mo Money going to try and stop the backs. They're not going to find anyone, though. But they're now they have kind of an open lane. A little tough guy. Going to have a little bit of room to breathe here. Going to try and push out the lane himself. Get himself a little more farm. Catch up at least a little bit. And uh, But the Lucian, he's going to pick up that early BF sword for himself. Where we see Maokai, he's actually going to be going for the early Aegis. So I would say that's probably going to turn into a banner command very early on here. Yep. Um, Echo has a hard time pushing in just because he has the AP empowered autos with the, the three strikes. Um, or the three hit pass of the... Uh, League of Legends so desperately loves, but um, CSM Never Lucky playing very aggressive here into this mid lane actually, trying to just uh, for poke out Jay Frazier whenever he can, but he it's working out for him so far as we do see Poof the Sheep uh, kind of hovering around this mid lane, but more or less going for the invade here, maybe trying to steal the red buff actually away, and he, he's going to find it successfully, and to no avail, like none the wiser is Boz good here, as they don't really have any uh, wards. The uh, Ari no, actually, actually, league, throwing, actually. Up, throwing up that pink ward, actually, so not even going to ward the red buff. And this is going to be a completely They're gonna successful collapse on it, though, steal. I think. They don't know he's there, though. They actually don't know he's there. No, I just... Oh, okay, never mind. They're collapsing on the pink ward, yeah, I think. Putting some defensive wards themselves But here. did they see him go over the... No, they I didn't. Don't, I don't they're going to know he, They've got to know he's there. Well, I mean, Bosgood, he's, he knows that his red was taken at this point, but he does... I don't think he knows the Krugs are there yet. <laughs> they're going to spot him out on that ward. They're going to... but. Basically, Poof the Sheep just got out scot-free, took yeah. some buffs, took some camps, and that's going to put Bosgut even a little bit farther behind. We, the CS discrepancy looks small, but the experience discrepancy is going to be, um, you know, a little manageable, or unmanageable, I guess. Yeah, TSM never lucky going in for a little bit of an unwarranted trade there. You can't, you want this LeBlanc matchup to be really aggressive on the side of LeBlanc, but you got to be able to land that chain to make sure that all those sigils of uh, malice, I think they're called now, yeah. sigils of silence, they used to be called rest Rip. in peace, but uh, you got to make, you gotta make that count. If you're distorting in and you're just hitting your QR and then not hitting any uh, anything else and taking a lot of trade in return from the orb deception of whatever Jay Frazier pumps out, mm -hmm. you're going to you know, start get, getting on the receiving end of these. But 77 CS to 55 CS, I believe he hasn't backed yet on the and on the side of Jay Frazier. He has actually backed uh, once. I don't yeah. think he's backed twice. So this is actually you know such a mismatch in the mid lane. And, and I mean, you, gotta, you gotta wonder, where's Boz good? Well, Sex has rolled around, come come and gone. Yeah. And not many ganks coming out. No, not really here, but uh, the Cullen gonna come out to try and push the wave in the bot lane. Baby Trog trying to push his lead even farther here. Little tough guy doing his best to catch up though, but anyway, back to this like mid lane discrepancy here. We still see that uh, TSM Never Lucky is still sitting on a cookie as well, so I mean, that's really shown how little. Um, you know, damage and kind of pressure he's had in that mid lane, but straight up going and buying an Abyssal Scepter first back, that is going to be huge uh, when it comes to this mid lane matchup, only sitting on just the, uh, the Spectre's Cowl, no, that isn't the Null Magic Mantle, actually, yep. um, for uh, Jay Frazier here, but 
to mill it on. Nice trade back and forth here. The, using the Twisted Advance will do a minion, actually, though. It's not going to lock down some mill it on. And it's going to be a tough go. That's not going to be a favorable trade for Rabel. Going to put himself farther behind it. A limited mana pool. He has to be very conservative of it uh, in this earlier part of the game until he starts getting himself some items. So just trying to farm under tower there. At least trying to just keep up and not give up too much right now. Yeah, and it looks like it's going to be an engage in the bot lane here. The Glacial Fish are being thrown out. Uh -oh. It is going to be a gank here by Poop the Sheep. Going to flash in and use the kick on a Baby Trog. They're definitely going to get this one. Or are they? A lot of stuff missing here. Poop the Sheep just missing his Q as well. The Ignite taking one last uh, tick of the Ignite as long with the flash Q from Little Tough Guy is going to secure that kill. It looked like maybe he was going to squeak away there from Baby Trog, but to no avail there. Very nice play by Poop the Sheep. Coming in, making some plays. And I mean, that was a lot of summoners burned in the bot lane, actually. I mean, that was Flash from Little Tough Guy, that was Ignite from Mo Money, but that was both summoners from Baby Trog there, the Flash and the Heal. So that's going to put him in a tough position there, especially being far behind, or not far behind, but he's going to be put a little bit behind yeah. by that. So now he's going to have to play a little more safe. Um, I would expect that uh, we do see Pukushi make a little more attention towards his boss side. Chaz is going to stop the back here, though. Um, so going to slow them down a little bit, at least. Uh, from getting back to that lane, give Lucian a little bit of time to try and push that wave out, kind of try and get them reset here, and uh, give himself a positional advantage a little bit. A little more breathing room. Yeah, yeah Lucian still getting a little bit of items on himself, still staying up in CS, so not totally, uh, not worst thing that could happen for yeah. them, but going to be a little bit of a roadblock for this mid-game beast. That is Lucian and Drop. You know, seeing that early Aegis come up from Parabola, you'd think, okay, they're going to go for early fights. Well, that's such a team-oriented item. It's useless in a in a solo setting. The banner active is useful, but you're just missing out on the complete aura mm -hmm. aspect. So I was thinking to myself, okay, we're going to see some, some fights right away. Some TP plays. As soon as you've picked up first item, but it hasn't been the case here. More money just missing that one. Ooh. Very nice by Baby Trug to scoot out of the way of that taunt. But yeah, not so much team play coming in here from Fellowship of the Nerds. They're just kind of content sitting back on their lower a little bit. Ooh, Ooh the wow. flash actually being forced on about money. And a very nice spell shield by Lil Tafka. Like, gonna block pretty much everything there. The explosive cast. Not gonna go through. Not gonna have any effect at all. So actually a nice play there by Lil Tafka. He, he's got that trigger figure right yeah. on the spell shield. Yeah, and I mean as well, that's that's a tough call. I mean using the explosive cast when you know that the spell shield is available. Um, but I mean Mo Money. A very proactive flash there. I mean, I think he may have been able to save it, just use his dash or the shadow dash to get out of that at least. Um, it would have put him out of range, and then if they would have used the explosive cask on him at that point, then sure, flash after that point. But then you're still burning a big cooldown if they're having to use that ability on you. Um, but I mean, at least he got out of there alive, not giving up another kill in that bot lane. So, um, yeah, good on him at that point. But, uh, Poof the Sheep, a very aggressive jungler right now in this Lee Sin, actually trying to just deny Bosgood a lot, and it's so far it's, it's working as he we see a, like a 20 CS discrepancy just in the jungle role here, and that is completely huge as thinking is right off the bat. Poof the Sheep, he's not a jungle main. No. This is not his uh, preferred role that he should be in right now, but showing some prowess on this Lee Sin is it's huge. Yeah, oh, absolutely. Wow. Bosgood get chunked very low there. Almost going down. TSM never lucky doing insane amounts of damage right now. Parabola is going to be the next target for uh, Team Malicious Intent. Flash being used by the Maokai, but the Sun going to come out from the Parallel Convergence. Who's going to get the kill? It is going to be Poop the Sheep. Picking up that one. The Dirty Chaos on Lee Sin. I love it. That's pretty much my play style on Lee Sin. You got to do it, fam. You got to go in on that second queue. You got to secure yeah. that kill. Man, you know that he was holding on to that Q. Oh, I know it. Yeah, I know it you in know my heart of hearts. I know that's the strat, the pro strat from all these sins. Mm -hmm. Just hold on to that Q and seek to the kill. So they are going to push down this top tower here very, very fast as the rest of the team is going to be sitting here just trying to hold on to the mid tower for themselves. I don't believe that Phillips and the Nerds is going to be able to take this one down just through the amount of wave clear that uh, Team Luscious and Ted is going to have, but that is going to be the top tower picked up here. So that is two towers to one right now for Team Malicious Intent, which is going to be a pretty solid start here. Uh, kind of uh, the same idea of what happened last game. We just saw slowly, slowly picking up these towers and all of a sudden 100 to zero, and then they just finished the game. Yeah, this is essentially pretty much the same story. Yeah, exactly. So we're going to have to see if Fellowship of the Nerds can really put the brakes on this here and battle back because they're going to have to get some mean picks here, get some great team fights, and they've structured it with their comp very well. I mean, if this Malcon can get onto a priority target and they can kind of blow them up i feel like they can definitely follow up and clean up after that point but they're gonna have to really focus on getting this maokai into the fight and getting you know the fights that they want before it's too late yeah exactly gotta agree with you there 
and I think they just they just gotta make a play somewhere. They've gotta find something. They can't just sit back and just keep taking shots to the chin. Even though if it's little shots, it'll kill here, kill there. We saw what it amounted to last game. Slowly but surely. Slowly yeah. but surely, and then the floodgates opened. Team Malicious Intent was able to win a lot of early or mid game skirmishes that led into late game team fights that led into pretty much no advantage, no kills, no towers on the side of Fellowship. And then you look at TMI score, they had, you know, 15 kills over. Mm. And a lot of towers, a lot of objectives, and a lot of gold. And it was just too much to come back from. Yeah, I mean, that's the name of the game, gold, baby. But um, we are going to see the uh, Lee Sin. He's going to be picking up that Hex Drink. are going to want to deny some of that AP damage. And there is a lot of it actually coming out here on the side of Fellowship of the Nerds. Just the Maokai, the Gragas, and the Ari, which is a similar idea of what they had last game. Just subbing out the Maokai for the uh, Nautilus last yeah. game. So, I mean... Similar idea, similar itemization there. Uh, really wanting to prioritize that MR on the side of the uh, Team Malicious Intent there. As a, kind of a hybrid build here already coming out here for uh, this Echo. I mean, he's got the Spectre's Cal, he's got the Sheen, and he's got the Kindle Gem. So I feel like he's going to be working towards the Sunfire Cape early on just so he can get that split push going, especially with the Sheen. Um, but, I mean, but he's kind of... Got bits and pieces of everything. Yeah, the Kindle Gem doesn't build in the Sunfire, though. It's Spear Visage. Sorry, Spear I mean, that's yeah. what I Spear Visage. That's what I thought you meant. And then he's also got the Cloth Armor, so maybe it's going to be a Frozen Gauntlet, or Iceborne Gauntlet, yeah. maybe, possibly, maybe. with that sheen. Could it, be a Lich Bane. It's, it's one of the two. That'd be quite the Bruiser Echo, honestly. I mean, yeah. not, um, but I mean, they could use it. I mean, they especially with the Lee Sin going Warrior and... Uh, uh, the Hex Drinker there, they're not going to have a lot of frontline um, unless Shen gets super, super tanky. Apart from Shen, but he's on that support kind of budget, right? So yeah. not having all the items in the, in the inventory, able to get super tanky. Put the Sheep, going to get Twisted Advance on by Herablo there, but nothing doing. As just looking to get some position around Baron is Felch from the Nerds. Hunt. But the on hunt is going to be used here. The Flash be used by Chosbin really early. Baby Chaw going to be the next focus, and he's going to get stunned up, and he's going to go down to Samiladon, going to pick that one up. Herablo going to get flashed on now. By Poof the Sheep, he's actually going to go past the Maokai. And right for Jay Frazier, the Maokai is gonna, eventually going to go down. The fall of the Ents is right now, and it looks like they're going to go towards the Tier 2 in this top lane. for nice Team Tent. Nice and prepped and ready to go. They've got the Pseudo Baron Empowered Minions here from the Rift Herald buff. And yeah, just another good skir like skirmish. Mispositioning by Fellowship of the Nerds. They get caught out, and it leads to more objectives and more kills for Team Lush's Intent. Where have we seen this before? Yeah, I mean, last game, exactly. exactly. I mean, they just keep snowballing this lead, and it's only 17 minutes in right now, so... Oh, man, Bosgood fighting off a little more than he can chew there. TSM never lucky. I mean, showing that this dog still got some bite here, flashing the mastery, saying, you picked the fight with the wrong LeBlanc. Exactly. Not quite sure what Bosgood's trying to accomplish there. What's stopping the back isn't going to do much. You don't have any follow-up anyways. It's just like... You're trying to be that fly. You're trying to be that annoying nuisance yeah, yeah. that just, like, stops I mean, you back for five seconds. And then, They know, swat that fly, man. Swat that fly, exactly. Yeah. And, uh, uh, yeah. TSM never lucky not eating the biggest of fly swatters because Bosbitch is just not finding all the items on himself right now. Yeah. Talk about support budgets. He's pretty much on one himself. Yeah, and, I mean, that's going to be tough going into this, but... Um, they might actually be fighting over this dragon here as it is live right now. And both teams trying to get their uh, positional and vision advantage around the area of the map. Mo Money, he, it looks like he's looking for that taunting gauge. He wants it really bad. He does not have the flash available though, so that's something that they're going to have to keep in mind here is he's a little bit limited on his range, so they're going to just have to try and maybe look for the pick elsewhere. Uh, but it, uh, Fellowship of the Nerds, it looks like they might just try and concede this, giving up the positioning advantage here as the mid lane is pushing very deep onto their tier 2 tower. So they kind of have to sacrifice something here. They have to give up a little bit. Uh, in order to try and just kind of conserve their own um, wave management here. But exactly. It's a Milodon, though. He's in the top lane. He does have teleport available, though, and it looks like uh, Fellowship of the Nerds is going to start up this dragon here, but the rest of the squad here from TMI is coming in. Yeah, the collapse here by TMI. Baby Chow going to find himself right in the middle of this one. He's going to go down Goodbye. to TSM Never Lucky. Goodbye, indeed. Haravlo going to be the next target as well. Little tough guy. On a killing spree, going to take that one down pretty easily. Explosive cast pushes away two members. But forces Simulodon closer into the fray. He's definitely happy to be there, and he's going to take another kill for himself. The Parallel Convergence not going to quite land up onto anyone meaningful. But that's three members down and zero down on the side of TMI. They are going to happily go towards this dragon, and they are going to pick up this one for themselves. It'll be the second of the game for them. Mm -hmm. Just once again... <laughs> Where have we seen this before? It wasn't last game, it was actually just a minute ago around the other pit in the game, the Baron Pit. And they got collapsed off from both sides. 
Baby Trog caught right in the middle of it. Can't go anywhere. Can't go left. Can't go right. Can't go up, down, whatever. Just gets deleted. And I mean, this is this is Team Malicious Intent textbook play. I mean, they yeah. they go for those objectives no matter what, and they make sure that they have the vision, they have the positional advantage. So if you try and force those objectives, they're gonna be able to collapse on that. I mean, sure, you saw some a little on the top lane, but when's the last time you seen him teleport? Like, he's been holding on to that teleport for such a long time, able to just teleport right into the team fight, and Echo is great at kind of collapsing at that point because he's going to be able to just toss out his W, zone people off at least, and if you're not getting zoned by that W, you're going to get stunned up by it. So, kind of wanting to use that choke point to their advantage around that dragon pit there and really picking a great fight for themselves here but fellowship of the nerds they have to kind of battle back here they have to find the right fight um because right now it's it's not going very much in their favor nine to zero in kills and uh almost a ten thousand gold advantage here just around uh the seven thousand gold mark so i could probably say that instead of almost ten thousand but it sounds <laughs> it, it, it sounds a lot better we're rounding up here yeah five rounded, are up but we're good wow a hundred thousand gold advantage wow wow we <laughs> Uh, Baron's gonna get hit up a little bit here, gonna take a little bit of a bite out of Poof the Sheep. Gonna be spitting that acid or whatever void ooze that void is. Ooze. Yeah, exactly. Poof the Sheep gonna get some meaningful vision around that area oh. though, but the charm gonna land on TSM Never Lucky. Some good damage returned onto this LeBlanc. But yeah, this, that's the matchup. You know, even if the charm goes out and hits you, you just, just go back to your distortion and. It's like it never happened. And I mean, especially with the Abyssal Scepter, you're gonna be pretty hard to be bursted out by just Jay Frazier. You're gonna need the rest of the squad to kind of follow up with you, especially when the charm lands, just because right now, one for one, Jay Frazier does not have enough AP to back it up. He does not have enough uh, penetration because he did decide to go with the Lucidity Boots rather than the Sork Pen Boots. He's not gonna be able to chunk you out as a full of Blanc right now. He's gonna have to be have a squad behind him right now. And I mean, I feel like that's basically gonna go for any member of the team besides the little tough guy. But the little tough guy still got this spell shield, so there's some kind of answer there. On the hunt pop, though. On the hunt pop, they're gonna look for another fight into the choke point. Let's see what they can get from this glacial fissure use. Very nicely there, but is it enough for Ravlo? Gonna try and have the AoE damage reduction, but it's gonna be a killing spree for Similodon. He's gonna take down the support, actually. And using that Corona Break is Similodon getting a little too close to dying. They're gonna use that one. Use that easy red button to get out of harm's way, but they're gonna set their sights on the top tower now. Only one member going down, Ooh. so pretty decent disengage there by Fellas for the Nerds. But Jay Frazier going way too close to the wall. Easy taunt there from Mo Money. We've seen that many times before. Bosgood just a tick of health away from going down, but not gonna quite find himself looking at that gray screen. Poof the Sheep decides they wanna dive this one. Baby Trog just barely living. He's also just moments away from death, and it is gonna be the flash in. Similodon actually gonna uh -oh. pick that one up for himself, but we've got a couple healthy members coming back from the fountain. Chawsgood and Bosgood, the Bash brothers, gonna come in and try and get that kill. They are gonna be successful getting that kill. The flash over the wall by Chawsgood actually, but he's not gonna have any follow up from Harablo or his bro. As they are a little preoccupied, TSM never lucky still around here as well. Similodon, Similodon, no mana though. I don't know if they want this one any longer. So all in all, I do believe it was a two for two actually. Baby Trog and Chazgood, uh, the only ones going down there. And then Chazgood able to actually heal up and rejoin the fight later on. And then I believe Lil Tough Guy and Mo Money mm -hmm. were the ones to go down in that fight. So two, two for two. Yeah, I mean they they went a little little ham under that tower, but I feel like they do have the freedom to do it. But I feel like. If they want to close the game out very, very quick, they could have probably taken that uh, inhibitor tower. They would have just forced everyone off of it. Um, at least the tower, probably not the inhibitor, but still. Um, <laughs> playing a little bit fast and loose now, TMI. Uh, realizing that they do have the advantage. They they can kind of spot that out. Still rocking that 7,000 gold lead here. But um, so far as itemization goes, we do see that the Maokai has gone for that Sunfire Cape. I don't, I don't, he's just so far behind at this point, it's, it's tough for him. I mean, he's 404 Echo to a 130 Maokai. Um, he's got around a half an item on top of that. So he's going to be building towers. That's on fire. He's almost got a full item on top of the Maokai here. So tough go of it for him. But still going to have to try and use that utility the best you can. That Twisted Advance still offers a lot. You can't really go in onto the Sivir though. She's just going to spell shield that. You're going to have to try and focus on the LeBlanc here right now. Um, and that's always yeah. tough to do as well. Yeah, I so mean, slippery. You, yeah, you have to make sure that you're in range. You have to really time it well because she's just going to go back to that distortion. You're going to follow her all the way back in and then just get blown up as soon as you're in the middle of that team. So you're going to just try and uh, focus on the waves right now. 
as the top lane is going to be pushing in uh, TMI's favor. But the bot lane should be kind of pushing out, but we do see some Milodon answering that bot wave. He's actually going to get on that split push train now that he's got that bomby cinder for himself. He's got the uh, Sheen proc as well, going to pick up a tower right now. And then they're just going to probably keep him in that bot lane because he does have teleport available too. Tell Ooh, the teleport's actually going to come in here for Herablo. He's going to join the fight. It's going to be Chosgen going down though. Little tough guy picking that one up for himself. Poof the Sheep going to try and get to the back line. He's going to get some help actually from the Gragas. A little bit of a team kill there by Boz. Good double kill going over to Similadon on that one. A huge misplay there. That Gragas barrel kind of sealed the fate for his AD carry there. Boz, good, you know, a good player in his own right, but a little bit of misplay there. Sorry, buddy. Mm -hmm. uh, hate to point that one out, but call it like I see it. Yeah, I mean, and that's exactly what our job is, right? Exactly. We're, we're here to cast. We are play by play. We're not. Uh, we're not here to look good. That's yeah. for sure. Jay Frazier gonna get taken down wow, though. TSM wait. never lucky. That just shows you how much damage LeBlanc still does. Never get nerfed. Uh, TSM never get nerfed. That's the name of that champion. Definitely Charles Good and Harabo are going to try and do what they can to try and save their base. But that's going to be the inhibitor for sure. And mm -hmm. the back off by Malicious Intent. They can definitely look towards Baron uh, if they really want it. They can look to at least get the positioning around there. They, I probably want uh, a little bit of a more concise pick before they go for it, but it's their, probably their next objective. Yeah, I feel like they're going to need that pick, or they're going to need to get that bot lane rolling, because right now they don't have teleport on some Milodon, so they're going to have to at least get that uh, like a nice slow push and get it up to at least the kind of gromp uh, position as far as the bot lane goes, and then they can you know, try and at least do a Baron dance there, make somebody make a tough choice at that point. Because right now, the nothing's really in their favor except for that top lane but i mean if somebody answers top lane they're able to still answer baron so you got to get that bot lane or at least that mid lane rolling dragon is live right now though and it looks like fellowship is going to pick that up pretty easily there's not really anyone that's going to be there in time to contest it as, as long as they can burn it out fast enough here because they don't have the jungler in range there boss could actually go into the towards the top side Mo money he might try and go for the hero skill there or at least try and go for the fight at this point he does have flash available so he can follow it up if he really wants to is the rest of the squad going to be able to follow up here just barely out of range with that yeah. flash taunt there, Ponox, and a little bit of conspicuous. Not sure they really wanted that fight either because they didn't have Sivir, and I believe it was Lee Sin that really wasn't in that fight either. So even if they catch that one person, it seemed like Fellowship of the Nerds kind of had more of the members around that area since they just took the dragon as a team. So maybe a would fight would have not went their way, but... Mm -hmm. It uh, misses all together anyways. They're able to get a dragon for themselves. That was kind of that rough positioning for uh, Malicious Intent. They're not able to threaten Baron if the other team goes for dragon, but at the same time, they're not able to actually threat, uh, threaten the defense yeah. for dragon. So it was just a free objective. At least it's something. It's not a lot, but it's something at, at this point for Fellowship. And, I mean, it's going to slow down the win conditions that uh, TMI does have at the moment. I mean, that would have been their third dragon, um, which would have, at 27 minutes, you would have been able to, if the game did get slowed down for whatever reason they would have at least still had that going for them so even yeah sure maybe they lost a bear or something like that and here we see parabola he's gonna be forced to teleport Ooh. out he's gonna have to answer that bot lane push that Milodon is going so now they're gonna be able to do the baron dance here as the waves are pushed in their favor um, and Herablo pushing out just one single wave. I don't know if that's going to be enough for him here at this point. He's going to have to probably go back down and answer that, get that slow push going even farther. Jay Frazier in a tough spot, though, now. He's in a little bit of trouble. He's probably going to be forced to back after this point, and they're going to try and follow it up and actually get the oh. kill. Not going to be enough, though. I don't think TSM Never Lucky actually got any sigil of malice on to that Ari. So that would have been the damage that would have secured the kill there. Herablo going to find himself running into Similadon face first in the jungle. The big thing about using that and teleport was go. the other team saw him use it right in broad daylight, picked up TV and scratched it. But instead, that's <laughs> going to be Baron here coming in from Team Malicious Intent. Let's see if Mushroom can answer, but Ari is in the top side. They're going to have to concede this. I don't, can't see them fighting for this one. If the undermanned, they don't have the numbers. Oh. It's going to be a miracle steal. Let's see if they can pick it up. It is going to be Lee Sin taking down that one. Baby Tron going to get caught up by Smildon in the back line, just trying to do what he can. Little tough guy going to help with Mo Bunny run down. Shaw's good, and he jumps to safety for now. Are they able to get anything off this? Actually, a great explosive cap there to disengage from Bosgood. But what can they take off the back of this? They've got the waves in their favor. Uh, bot wave, not so much, but mid wave. They can push this one in pretty much all the way here. They've got the Baron Empowered Minions. 
Yeah, they're gonna pick up the, the mid lane turret for sure. Probably gonna keep pushing that in towards the inhibitor just because they already have the super minions pushing in there. Um, they might even just try and tank the bot tower as well. I'm not too sure actually what the health of it is looking like, but they are rotating down towards uh, that. Mo Money is gonna try and get that wave uh, pushing for himself right okay. now. I thought maybe as you squeeze by the counter, would be gracious. Please, Cam. The directed Cam would have, would have caught the edge of that, but we'll have to wait and see. Cam. But we do see Mo Money is gonna get that split push rolling for himself now. Um, they did itemize very, very well actually. The locket picked up here for Mo Money. And on top of it, just the vast amounts of MR that we do see for uh, the side of uh, TMI right now. So it's a very good item. Um, if we do see like something like the Banner of Command coming out from Echo, then that would be even better. The double aura, and then I mean, split push just with Similit on there. It's gonna be huge. Uh, is he gonna ultimate back? Do it. Do it. No. Do it. Too late now. So now he's just going to have to Dang walk it. back to a lane, not Buddy. sure which one. Probably going to go to a different lane than the rest of his team, though. He might actually be looking for the TP flank here. Uh, Ooh, yeah, he, he, he was waiting in base a lot. It looked like he was just waiting to, for the right moment to TP in there with the home guards. But instead, he's going to head top and he's going to hustle his bustles all the way up to there. Uh, just make sure that wave's pushing. Probably going to collect mid wave yeah, as well. Yeah. Yep. Because bot lane's already pushed into the tower there. Yep. They already have somebody answering that lane. So, I mean, you're just going to be continually pushing a wave into a base where it's already pushed in. Yeah, leave someone to answer that. Get another lane that's not pushed up there. So, after you take this bot lane, you can at least kind of rotate towards that mid lane. And then you're it's already an open inhibitor in that top side. So, you can continually rotate all through all three lanes and pick up objectives in all three lanes. They're going to utilize this Baron buff very very well and i can already see it kind of rolling out and panning out exactly how they have want it at least right now cannon wave already pushed in there as well they have another one just about to crash in and similidon continually pushing up here as well so they have to send someone to answer something else here yeah they've got to do it let's see how they manage it a little bit of micromanaging skills coming into play here four flush for the nerds their inhibitor in the top lane is respondo so that gives a little bit of breathing room in this tower defense Bravo gonna flash in, but he's all by himself. Gonna suicide. One v four. Is the rest of the team gonna follow up? It looks like they're gonna try to. Mo Money gonna try and go in there. The double kill going over to little tough guy. The TP in, and it is gonna be a triple kill. Is this gonna be the penta kill? We'll see. Is there enough follow up? Little tough guy, get the damage out. Let's go, little guy. Come on, little tough guy. Is he gonna get the quadra? He's gonna get the quadra. Gotta dive. He gotta go in. Penta, penta, penta kill. Penta Kiru coming for a little tough guy on Siver in this one as we got the disco camera going on in and out <laughs> on a little tough guy. He's going to pick that one up for himself. Ladies and gentlemen, I do think this is going to be the game if they just focus on the towers. Yes, I do believe it's going to be the game. The death timer is a little bit long here. Herabo is going to be the only one alive along with Chazgood. I don't think it's going to be enough. Too much damage coming out here from Team Malicious Intent. This is going to be all for naught. It's going to be the clean 2-0, I think, just three or four kills for Fellowship of the Nerds yeah. in the entirety of this series. And yeah, they so only they only had two kills last. Only two kills, so they're gonna match that again. Twenty-one to two are the kills in this game. Thirty-two minutes in, pretty much the exact same time as last game. And just like deja vu, we're looking at this victory screen for Team Malicious Intent. Yeah, very strong showing. I mean, even though Fellowship of the Nerds played the early game quite well, TMI played that mid game and the late game lanes super well like just their map rotations how they play the objectives not focusing too much on the baron until they have the waves properly managed they're forcing the tp tp out of parabolo kind yeah. of sealed their fate at that point i mean at, you can't do that in broad daylight i mean you have to at least try yeah. and play it a little bit strategically uh, i mean he could have backed and used the home guards to get to that bot lane because i mean it was still pretty close to their base so he probably could have saved it just through that regard but it ended up having to use a teleport and, there and then and at least you have teleport for the baron fight afterwards, exactly right? so yeah. you could have saved it but similidon just able to kind of bait that out of them there rotate down get a pick in the mid lane and then they were able to really just clean up that baron pretty free and at that point i mean you, you're gonna just keep pushing in the waves. They had it all managed exactly how they they planned it. I mean, yeah. it's like they had it all pre-written and they just went step by step. It's like you're following a recipe at that point for TMI. Exactly. I don't know if you have anything else to say about the series. That pretty much sums up the first game as well. Everything we said for game two yeah, is pretty I'm... much a carbon copy of game one. Early game was a little bit slow, a little bit here and there for Team Lush's intent, but in the mid-game, they picked up the skirmishes, they got picks, they were able to rotate well, get objectives, 
and we just never saw any glimmer of hope really for fellowship yeah i mean it's, it was a very well methodical game from tmi yeah. so gotta give him props for his due but fellowship of the nerds great early game from them there and still a great match to watch all yeah all. i had fun casting it for Absolutely. sure and the implications for the standings and pentakill pentakill as well first one of the regular season yeah is it i believe so i don't think so I don't think so. I'm pretty sure there's been some, but first one in a while for me. Whatever. Yeah. Short-term memory loss, but I believe Team Malicious Intent is going to remain in first place. They're going to remain undefeated, and I think Fellowship of the Nerds still has their third spot locked down for now, but the rest of the week could change things. Speaking of the rest of the week, we've got some more matches for you guys tomorrow. Sasquatches versus Mid Viz Major, the team that I constantly was accidentally saying tonight. Sasquatches versus Viz, Viz Major, that is going to be tomorrow at 7. Mm -hmm. Should be a good one. Yeah, I mean, um, both teams, very, very scrappy. They like their team fights. They like to just duke it out a lot. So, I mean, that one should be an absolute bloodbath. Going to be uh, really excited to tune into that game. But, guys, um, as far as other events that are going to be coming up in the future here, uh, we are actually going to be hosting an ARAM tournament that is going to be coming up um on april 16th um yes. so that is going to be a saturday there uh registration is now live on our website at skleague.ca slash aram if you guys want to check that out um there is going to be some um money uh, prizing, there is. and there's going to be some rp is prizing so make sure you check that out all the rules details um and registration is going to be all available on our website there so be sure to check it out as well as we are actually having a giveaway for Overwatch. I don't know if that's a little game you guys might have heard about. Um, if you check out our Facebook page, there's going to be some details on there on how to enter in for the giveaway for Overwatch. So make sure you guys check that out. Yeah, the road to 1,000 likes on our Facebook page. So make sure you drop those likes because we ain't doing the giveaway till we hit that goal. Boom. It's got it. It's gonna be hyped. Overwatch coming out soon to a store near you. You definitely want to get that code. Don't want to pay all the all the money that Blizzard's asking from you. Exactly. You get you win the ARAM money, and then you spend it on Overwatch. No skins. wait, but you don't want to spend it on yeah. You use it on skins because you oh, got the yes. free giveaway here. Yes. So it's all like it's exclusively on skins. Can only go up from that here. Cosmetic. Exactly. The Love micro the micro transactions. That's what it's all about. Absolutely, guys. We're gonna wrap things up here. We've got to thank a couple of sponsors on our end. Manabar YXE, the first or the premier esports bar Premier. coming to Saskatoon, Saskatchewan in the early summer, late spring months. Make sure you check out their Facebook. All the links on our Facebook, uh, direct to their Facebook as well, and on our website, all the links for them. They do all sorts of stuff for us. They've got all our finals, you know, helping us plan that out. We're going to have, hopefully, an after party at Manabar once it's opened. Uh, so that's going to be really fun. Mm -hmm. Big props to those guys. But we've got another sponsor too, Ponox. Yeah, absolutely. we got to thank uh, one of our main sponsors, Wide Mouth Media. They make all the beautiful content that you see there. Uh, they make our website. So if you guys like that, be sure to give them a check out on their website. All the links are going to be available on our Facebook page as well as our website that they handily made. Um, all of our overlays, everything, all the team logos that you guys see uh, during the stream here, all set up by them. Uh, they do some great work and they, they you know treat us like family. Treat us like family, exactly. As always, make sure you check out our website, skleague.ca, for all the upcoming matches, the stats from past matches, and all the links to all our other stuff we got going on. Make sure you file, follow us on Facebook and like us on Twitter or the other way around. All our links are going to be on this side over here. Make sure you check that out. I've been Silky Mittens. You've been Ponox. We've had Skill Oz behind the camera. Woo! And, uh, yeah, it's been, it's been unreal, buddy. Yeah, it's it been has a good been. One. Uh, make sure you guys check out the games tomorrow night. Once again, it is going to be Sasquatches versus Viz Major. But that is going to wrap it us wrap it up for us here tonight. So make sure you guys tune in tomorrow night. We'll see you later. Vape Nation. Bye.